Reducing an organization's carbon footprint has recently become far more important than reducing energy costs. This is because many customers, both commercial and the public, see carbon reduction as important. A look at packaging on supermarket shelves will show that carbon reduction is important to consumers. In addition, many multinationals, including Tesco and Marks and Spencers, will ask their suppliers for the amount of carbon per product. This video looks at how organisations can make carbon footprint reductions. Our experience, with over 25 years of carbon reduction behind us, is that implementation falls into three well-defined categories or tiers of action. These are no cost, low cost and capital projects. In the first tier are actions that do not involve any cost at all. These are procedural changes, adjustments to settings and improved maintenance. These can be easy to dismiss as being trivial. However, carbon savings of at least 10% are common. Typical examples of no cost carbon savings are labeling light switches, adjusting room thermostats, enabling power safe settings on IT equipment and fixing air leaks. A good example of no cost savings in commercial applications is the widening of the dead band on thermostats to control room heating and cooling. This simple action will reduce the tendency of air conditioning systems to heat a room and then cool the room as the temperature has overshot. An example of no cost savings in industrial applications is the fixing of air leaks and reducing the air pressure in compressed air systems. The second tier of actions to reduce the carbon footprint involves installation or upgrade of controls. Carbon savings of a further 10% are often realised. Whilst cost saving is not a primary consideration, paybacks of less than one year are typical and thus projects can be easily financed. Such recommendations would include room thermostats, time clocks, occupancy detectors, weather compensation of heating circuits and data acquisition and control. A good example of improved controls in commercial applications is the installation of optimum start heating controllers. These will vary the start time of the central heating boilers according to the outside weather conditions. Significant savings, perhaps up to 10% of the heating bill, can be made using these controllers. A good example of improved controls in industrial applications are for the improved sequencing of air compressors. The traditional method of bringing additional air compressors online by pressure differential is extremely wasteful. By the time the first tier and the second tier actions are implemented, there should be carbon savings of around 20%, or more in some cases. There will have been some costs incurred, but due to the cost savings, total project payback should be significantly less than 12 months. The final tier of carbon savings is that of capital projects. These involve upgrading or replacing planted equipment. These may include biomass boilers, replacement of light fittings, installation of solar or PV panels. Typically, paybacks will be in the order of two, to five years and board approval would be needed. In order for such capital projects to be approved at board level, it is important that the rationale for the project be stated as carbon reduction, not cost reduction. Using carbon reduction as the rationale will achieve a wider consensus. Environmental efficiency has over 25 years experience of reducing carbon and has helped many organisations throughout the UK and Ireland. If you want to reduce your carbon footprint, please contact us on any of the phone numbers listed or use the web contact form or email us. And if you are still watching, a little bit about myself. I am Bob Sutcliffe, a Director of Environmental Efficiency. I'm a Chartered Engineer with over 25 years experience in energy issues both in the UK and Ireland. I am also a Director of MP, the Professional Body for Energy Practitioners in Ireland. I have worked with leading multinationals and startups. In addition, I have worked with the Carbon Trust, Enterprise Ireland, SEAI, InvestNI and NSAI. I'm also on the approved consultants list for Enterprise Ireland for the Green Start, Green Plus and Green Transform programmes which cover amongst other things energy management systems.